Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi, Baba Kama Daf Chaf. We begin right on top, Pahu Barcha. There was a story regarding a goat, the Chaz Olifta, who noticed some turnip, a Puma de Dana, on top of a barrel. So right at the opening of the barrel was some attractive lefes, to which the um, goat was drawn to. Sarich Salik Achla Lifta V'tavri Ledana. So the animal climbed its way up, Sarich Salik, to the top of the barrel. Achla Lifta ate up the lefes, V'tavri Ledana. By doing so, also damaged, broke apart the barrel. Chayvei Rava. So Rava obligated the owner of the goat to pay a lifta v'adana for both the lefes and the container nezek shalom full payment asks the Gemara why my time you know for for uh, eating the lefes I understand that's that's shame you pay full payment but for breakage that's aggression that's uh, something unusual pay only 50% like Karen the answer is kiv and the urche lamecha lifta since an animal is expected to be drawn after lefes and to eat it, or it's understood that he'll make every effort <laughs> to even climb up and get to this thing, even if it's sitting on top of this container. And ultimately, uh, you know, it can come to the point that he'll break the barrel en route to the, uh, to the food. So it's part of the eating process, so to speak, and therefore it's included in and Shane and Regal, and therefore he pays fully, 100% for both items, for the lefes and for the container. Omar Ilfa, here's another Allah. Behem versus Aram, an animal is walking along on the street, and extends its, you know, its head, its neck, and consumes some food which was uh, positioned on the back of the, uh, of the other animal. Chayeves, you pay fully. Why? My time. Huh? It's in the street. Shane is putter in the street. So why is this different? It is very different. He didn't eat it off the street. He ate it off the animal's back. My time. Gabi chaverta. Kechatzer hanizak dummy. The animal's back is called chatzer hanizak. You have no business, um, you know, putting your head into the other animal's back. So it's as though you entered the other's territory and you pay for Shane. Leima Maseyele. Perhaps we can prove this for my Bryce. Which says, Hi, so Kapasa Michelle is lachir. A fellow is walking along the street and he has his basket of food hanging on his back. An animal comes along, puts his head in, and eats off the back of this fellow. Chayevis, you pay. Apparently, we regard this as a chatzran, is it? It's a raya to ilfas halacha. No, says the Gemara, could the Amar Rabbah be kafetis? Perhaps, just as Rava, regarding a different halacha, interpreted it to be referring to a case of jumping which makes it something unusual, which makes it Karen, and Karen is chayv in the street. Hachanami b'kefet says, likewise in this case, perhaps the Bryce is discussing this very scenario where the animal jumped up. Rashi says it's not the derech of the animal to be so desperate. That's uh, unusual. It's called Karen, just as Karen is irregular. And therefore, just like by Karen, you pay 50%, even in the street, here as well. So we regard it as Karen, not as regal or shame. Where was Rava's statement said? Aho, on the following halach. The Omar Beisha, Behemah Rishas HaRabbi. Behemah is in the street. Hal Chava Achla Ptura. If, you know, as he's walking along, he eats somebody's stuff, he's potter, regal, shame, Rishas HaRabbi is potter. Om Dava Achla Chayevitz. But if it stops to eat, it's Chayev. Why? It's still in the street. Mayush Nahal Cha. Why is eating while he's walking? Exempt the urchehu because it's usual, it's regular, it's expected. Am danami urchehu. It's also expected the animal to stop for a moment to eat. So why is it different? Am rabbi bekei fetzes. No, he didn't just stop. He jumped. That's irregular behavior. That's considered a variation of karen, for which you're liable even in the street. Boy, Rabbi Zeir comes another shail. So we know that Shane is chayiv in rishus hanizik, but not in rishus harab. Misgalgil mau. What if something's rolling? The animal takes you know the food and rolls it out of the Nizex, the victim's place, and brings it into the street and eats it there. Do we focus on where it was taken from, which was the territory of the victim, in which case you're chayev, 
Or do we focus on where he consumed it in the street? Shane in the street is potter. Mao Echidami, what exactly happened? If you go into Kaima Omer, so this bundle of you know uh, animal feed, this hay, was really Bershis Hayachid in this place territory. Become as Galgava Asi, and the animals rolling it, Mishis Hayachid, from where it really was, Lushis Ram to where he's gonna eat it. My, what is the Allah? Do you look at where it came from? Chatzar and Izak, so you're Or do you look at where he actually consumed that food, which is here on the street, and you're pot? My, what is the Allah? Toshma, here comes it right. From a bride, so Tony Rabchi. Maso, you have a load of food. Miktsase bifnim, miktsase bachot. It's being rolled out from there to here. So it's a bit here, it's a bit there, and then it's being rolled out. Achal bifnim chayevis. So if the animal rolled it in, to Rishon Sayach and ate it there, you chayev. Achal bachot ptur. If you rolled it out into the street, Shane in the street is potter. My love, misgal gavasi. Perhaps we're speaking about this very case. So apparently, you focus on where the um, crime took place. Look, says the more no. Ema will revise the halach. It's not about where it took place. It's about where it was when he took it. Achla al mashabifnim chayevis. If the animal ate something which was originally inside the rishus hayachid, for that you pay. Al mashabuchutz p'tur, the pot which was originally outside. Your your potter, because it's all about the place of origin, not the place of consumption. And all the terrors can be. Yeah, actually, Rabbi Chia is speaking about the entire bundle and wherever he ate it. That's what you reckon. Okay, if he ate it in the street, he's totally potter. He ate it inside, he's totally chayef. Why? Rabbi Chia was speaking about a unique case. He's not speaking about a you know, sack of independent kernels. In which case, one kernel has nothing to do with the other. But here, we're speaking of Psila das a long strand of, you know, of, of grass feed, animal feed. So here we say that the entire bundle is regarded as one unit, one entity. And if the animal finds this bundle, you know, even if it's half in the street, half in the Roshus of the Nizak, but he's standing in the street and eats a deer, The whole thing, says Rashi, gets drawn after this part. And therefore, it's regarded as though it's all sitting here in the street. All right, so picture this. You have a long bundle, half in the street, half across the, uh, you know, the border in the Rosh Hashanah. But if the animal is sitting in the street and eating it, everything sort of gets drawn to the animal. It's one unit, it's one entity, it's one item. Right, so there, we focus on where the animal ate it. If you ate it in the street, so we look at even the part that was inside as though it was sitting outside because inevitably it's going to get drawn after the part that's sitting outside. The animal is grabbing that part and dragging all it. So if it happened in the street or potter, you can't you know, separate this one entity. Right? Because if he's going to eat the part that's lying in the street, inevitably the other part is going to come along with it. Our Shiloh was, um, Reb Zera was speaking, says Rashi was speaking in a case where, let's say there are separate entities. You have a bag of kernels. Some are inside, some are outside. One thing has no connection to the other. Unless it actually rolls that part out and brings it here. So there we have a Shiloh. Do we look at where it came from or where it's now? But again, in this case, we're speaking about a long, one long continuous item. Part of it is in the street, part of it is in private territory. So the animal standing in the street and eating the part that's in the street, and everybody's going to bring along the other, it's going to all get drawn to the side. So you can't differentiate between the two parts of the same entity. And it's considered like he ate the entire thing in the street. Okay, Achluxus. So the mission spoke about an animal who ate stuff which are considered roi, edible stuff, in which case it's called shane, in which case you're chayib only in Rishus Hanizab, not Rishus Rabbim. But if you ate ksus or kalim, um, something unusual, something inedible, you pay chatsi nezik. Because that's an expression of keren, that's unusual. And the mission continues. When do we say this, this halacha, this liability applies? Rishus Hanizab. 
But Rosh Hashanah, you're potter. Now, potter on what? Even on unusual consumptions? Even on ksus or kalim, which is kerem? Or is it only going on regular achila? Like uh, Paris v. Rockers. Achlaksus, says the Gemara, Ahai. It's an uh, exemption for consuming it in Shosh Rabbim. And, wh- and what is it going on? Omar Rav Akul, it's going on all these cases. Whether it was edible stuff or inedible stuff, you always potter in the street. My time, of why? Karen is chayv in the street. The answer is kolam A person deviates. He puts his stuff down the street. Uba achar vishina we potter. Second fellow comes along and deviates on that, such as this animal who damages this guy's, you know, garment or kalim sitting in the street for no good reason. He's potter. You have no right to put it there. Ushmol Omar Shmol disagrees. Lo yishon al peres v'yirakis. The p'tur of Rishis Ram only applies to regular eating because shein is potter in the street. But regarding the other items, it's an act of aggression. It's unusual. It's Karen. You chayv in the street. V'chein amar shlokish akulu is going back to Rav's approach. Then anything that occurs in the street, your potter, even if it's ksus or kalim, v'az the shlokish tamei. Or shlokish is consistent with what he says elsewhere. The same idea we find elsewhere. Damar shlokish shtei poret b'shusar Rav. Picture two animals in the street. Achas Rav so one is crouched. V'achas malachas one is walking by. But the animal that was walking kicks the one that's sitting there in the street for, for no good reason. You're potter because you have no business sitting here. But if it's the other way around, the one crouching strikes the one walking, you have to pay. Clearly, Rosh Lakish holds that when you deviate, you have, uh, you know, you have your para illegally parked in the street. Nobody's responsible for it. Same thing with the Ksus Caleb sitting in the street. You eat it, you're potter. Rabbi Yechon Amar, Rabbi Yechon disagrees. He says, Loishon will appear to your rockies. When an animal eats ordinary stuff in the street, you're pot. Avok sus of a kelim chayeves, but if he eats up other types of articles, you're chayev. Because that's shinui, that's karen. Really? Says the Gemara, Leima, Rabbi Yechon, less late the Rish Lakish, I feel a bit of Do you mean to say Rabbi Yechon disagrees with Rish Lakish's concept, even with regarding to those two, um, two animals in the street? Loi, says the Gemara, Loi, 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 Truthfully, Rabbi Yechen agrees in concept to Rish Lakish. When there's a gross violation of, 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 of you know, uh, parking laws, of course, nobody's responsible. The difference, difference is that over here, this fellow left you know, his coat in the street for a couple of minutes. Nishkefer Ksus Abdi Inshi De Manchi Glimi Matpachi. It's expected. People sometimes you know, drop their clothing for a minute to rest up and put down their load to rest up. So it's not called a real mishana for which, you know, people are exempt upon damaging. For an animal to sit and crouch on the street, that's totally illegal, totally unexpected. And therefore, you deviate to that extent. Don't be surprised if your animal is struck down by the other animal walking by. So bottom line is, an animal eats peris virakis in the street, that's pot. If we have the shtei parais, one is sitting, one is walking, one strikes the other, so we say that you are Mishana, uh, the other fellow is Potter. Neither Rabbi Yechon agree to that. But in the case of the Mishnah with Ksusu Kalim, that's a Shaila Machlekes. How big of a Shina is that to uh, warrant an exemption upon damaging it? Vimnanis, Mishalmas, Mashananis, Mishnah says, even though you're Potter for, you know, Shane and Rishisuram, but if you benefited from that meal, you say to yourself, you know, uh, an animal, a meal, then you have to pay for that. Vakama, so how much do you have to pay? Not actual value, right? You have to pay what you benefited. How, how do you reckon that? You have two approaches. Rabba Amar, Demei Amar. What it would cost you to feed your animal, you know, uh, animal feed. Hey, straw. So if you have a pound of bananas, you pay uh, what it would cost you to feed the animal a pound of, uh, of hay. Rabba Amar, Demei Surim Bezoil. You know, sometimes the owner would like to treat his animal to something, you know, tasty and healthy. So, you, you pay as much as it would cost you to feed your animal, you know, uh, barley, if you got a good deal on barley. So, you know, you wait for a good deal, and that's what you would pay. So that's how much you would be willing to spend. Rashi says it's a third less of the market value. So if it costs six, you only have to pay four. Okay? Tanik say the Rabba. Tanik say the Rabba. We have a right from a price at each sheet. Tanakh say the Rabba. 
they pay the value of hay. Rab Shimon Chai Omer, Eimer Shalemis Eldme Omer Levad. You pay it as much as this thing would, would would cost you if it would be hay. That's all you pay. Tanakh said the Rav, Rav Rai to Rav, you pay more than that. Im Nenis, Shalemis Masha Nenis. How's that? Kate says, Och Lekav Kebay. So the animal ate a kav or, or two kav. And I'm going to shalom to me. Not obligated to pay the actual value of that thing. We, we value, we estimate. How much would a person be willing to feed his animal something which is roy uh, for the animal, even though it's you know it's not his regular menu, but sometimes you give him a treat. So you have to pay that amount. And Rashi explained, you know, reduce the amount because. Even if you'd be willing to treat him and give him some sa'irim, but you know, you'd wait until you get a good deal. 30% off, so that's how much you would have to pay. But that's only if it's beneficial to the animal. But if the animal ate something which you would never, you know, in your wildest dreams feed your animal, chitim, or something which is detrimental to its health, then you're totally potter. So, bottom line is, although Shane is potter if it happened in the street, but you have to compensate the owner of that uh, item. Inasmuch as you saved by your animal having that as a meal as opposed to you feeding him. How do we do that? We have two uh, two pshat. Says the Gemara, Amar le Rav Chizda le Rami Barcham. Le Yahaviz Gaban Ba'urt Bitchum. A pity that last night you weren't uh, in the Tchum, you weren't nearby, you know, near the base Medrash, the Boyla and Mili Malyasa. You missed out, we had an interesting question. Amar say, asked them, My Mili Malyasa, what's the. Uh, a uh, thing that you had uh, up for discussion last night. Armor Lacey says like this. Hador So if a fellow lives, stays in, you know, this other fellow's property, lives in his house, Shlemi Daitu without permission. Question. Tzorach lahalois leischar? Does he have to pay him rent or not? Now, it all depends on the circumstance, right? What exactly happened? Hechi dummy. Are we speaking about a chatzar? It's just a term, uh, an expression. It's just uh, really means any any um, type of uh, property, whether it's a house, whether it's a you know. So, in any case, this place is not meant for rental. It's not uh, a rental property. He wasn't planning on renting it out, so it's not intended to bring him any income. The gavra the ever the maker, and likewise, this fellow who decided to uh, park himself in this other person's house was not really a fellow who was willing to rent. He wasn't interested in renting. He wasn't about to spend any money on this. Rashi explains, for instance, he has other places to live. So there isn't really any financial gain on his part, nor any financial loss on the landlord's part. So certainly he doesn't pay anything. He has no real hanna. And the owner has no loss. So of course there's no discussion here. Of course, he's put. Ella rather was speaking bechotzer de kaimalagra, that this place was meant for rental, was meant as a rental property. The gavra, the david lemaker, likewise, the fellow who entered was looking for a place to rent. Of course, in this place he has to pay. Zen and of the he has financial gain, he has financial loss. Of course, he has to pay. Leitzricha must be speaking bechotzer de kaimalagra. The place was not meant for rental. This fellow was looking for a place to rent. So now, he moved into the other person's house. My, does he have to pay or not? Can he turn to the landlord and say, Look, what did I um, take from you? You didn't lose anything. You weren't planning on making money on this anyways. Or perhaps the landlord could tell the tenant, After all, you had a no. Financial gain, you would, have, you would have rented a different property. So pay me for it. Amalei. So he responded, right? So this was the question posed to uh, Rami bar And he had a ready answer. Masnisani, it's our Mishnah, Baba Kama. Hi, Masnisani. So he asked him, you know, which Mishnah do you mean? Amalei, he says, <laughs> in a joking manner, shamishli. if you'll serve me, I'll tell you. Shokal, surgery karachli. So he took his uh, scarf, his garment, and he wrapped it up, he folded it up for him. Okay, he served him. Amalei, he says, okay, I'm ready to give you the answer. Imnanis, Mishalem is mashanenis. So now that you're sort of submissive to me, you'll accept from me, I'll tell you where it is. It's the Mishnah, which says that if the animal had a no, the owner of the animal had some benefit from the animals, uh, you know, feeding off the other person's food, you have to pay 
the amount that you benefited. There you go. So you see that you have to pay for Hano. Likewise, this fellow who saved on his rent. Amar Rabba, so Rabba responded when he, heard, when he heard this, you know, back and forth. He says, Look how much, there is no reason to fear of a Margish or to be apprehensive when you're a person with Siata de Shema, you gavra, a man, like Rami Bar Choma, the more say that Hashem, his masters, helps him out. Basically, you know, if you look closely at this sort of comparison, he was proving this case from the Mishnah's case. But really, it's not really a proper matchup. And we're going to see in a minute why. Kibbal Minate still, he accepted it from him because he had Siyata de Shemaya. Now, why is it not a perfect match? Because, Hai Nene Vizechasu. In the case of our Mishnah, the animal chewed the other person's food. So the owner of the animal had a no. And on the flip side, the owner of that food lost out. So of course he has to pay. That's Zen Nene Vizechasu. That's like the first case there. Right, with the rental that I was meant to pay and he was meant to earn. So of course you have to pay. Vahai, but the case that we're looking at, where he entered the other person's territory without permission. He was gonna rent, but the other person was not gonna make any money on that place. There's gain on my part, but no loss on his part. So it's totally un- unrelated to the mission. In the mission you pay because he had no loss. He had no loss. So the Gemara asks, Virami Barchama who equated this to the Mishnah. Why? What was he thinking? He held that it was a good matchup. Stam Peri is Bishas Rabin. Because, what's, what's your question? The owner of the Paris lost out. No. Because we assume that Paris sitting in the street, Afkuri Mafkulu, he's expecting it to be trampled upon, he's expecting it to go down in value. He's not expecting to get much from those Paris anymore. So, so really, it's called Loi Chaser. He's not really losing. Right? Rashi learns the Hosei from Libo is going to get lost. He's going to get ruined. So basically, he's being mafkirit. And therefore, it's a perfect equation. It's a perfect uh, you know, connection. These two cases are perfectly alike. There's Hana on the recipient's part, on the, you know, the squatter's part, on the animal owner's part, but there's no chaser, there's nothing... No loss on the landlord's part, or in this case, on the Paris's owner's part. It's not. We have a Mishnah, which we're going to try to use as a raya to our shayla. What happens if it's Zenen Vezeloi Chaser? Reuben had a no, without Shimon really losing much from that. Hamakiv Chaveru Mishal Shrochosev. So we have Shimon with a field, and Reuben purchases, you know, three fields on three sides of Shimon. The gutter, and he, you know, then he erects a fence between himself and the, uh, you know, the uh, landowner who's now almost landlocked from all, you know, from three sides. He puts a fence in between. The gutter is a rishayna, a on the second side as well, a shlishis, and the third side as well. So he puts a fence between his fields, between his first field and Shimon, his second field and Shimon, and the third field and Shimon. So now Shimon is surrounded from three sides, but open from the fourth. Ein mechayven oisai. There's no way for us to obligate him to contribute to defray the, the uh, fence building expenses. Why? Because he says, look, I'm fully exposed on the fourth side. You haven't really benefited me any. Let's make a deal. Call review. Suppose Rubey now has a fourth field on the fourth side as well, and he fences that in. So now Shimon is fully protected. We obligate Shimon to contribute. That's a riot to our story. Shmamino, we can prove from this. That when we have a Zenen, in this case it's Shimon, Vizelo Yechaser, in this case it's Ruven, who would have put up the fence regardless, Chayev, Shimon is responsible. Is that a riot? No, Shani Yasin, there it's different. The Amr because Ruven, the fellow on the perimeter, can claim to Shimon, you know, I had major loss because of your presence. At Garamt Li, okay, for you say, it's only because of you that I have to make that additional interior fence. If not for you, sitting inside my fields, there would be no need for fences. So, here it's a case of Zen and Vizeh Chaser. Of course he has to pay. Tashma, he comes another right. The other way around. Omar Biyasi. Although initially we don't obligate Shimon to pay, but I'm Ahmad Nikaf, the goddess of If the Nikaf, Shimon in this case, the one that's being surrounded by Ruben's fences, gets up and says, okay, you know what? I'm going to add a fourth fence on the one that was ex- exposed, right? So now he's surrounded from all four sides and he has full benefit from that fence. Megalgnol of Zakol. Now he has to go and contribute 
and, 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 and defray part of the expense regarding all three original fences as well. Because now he's fully benefiting from all the fences together. Which wasn't the case until now when he uh, until he you know put up the fourth fence. So let's make a deal. Tam of the Godar Nikov. That's only because the Nikov went ahead and completed the enclosure. Ha Makif Potter. But let's say the Makif. Reuven would have completed the enclosure, it would be Potter. Shmamino, we have a right from here, Zen and of Zelakhasa Potter. So we have a right that when Shimon has full Hano, it's fully protected. And Ruvain is not really uh, losing anything because he has to fence in his, his field in any case. Uh, Shimon doesn't have to pay. So there's a riot from uh, Rabbi Yaisi that you're part of. Says the Gemara, there's a reason. This is not your standard case. Shani Hasim, there it's different. The Amar lay because Shimon, the enclosed, the surrounded fellow, can say, look, you're asking me to pay for this fancy fence. Lididi Sagili. For me, it would be enough, Benetiro Barzuza, just to have a, you know, minimal protection. Using some sort of mesh fence that costs a Zeus, you know. So, true, I'm having a knob, but, you know, why are you uh, sending me this big bill? I could have, I could have just gone, gotten by with cheap. Therefore, he's part Toshmai comes another writer. Habai is Valiya Shoshnaim Shinaflu. So you have the first floor, you have the upper floor. Reuben lives downstairs. Reuben owns, owns the upstairs. Shinaflu, the house collapsed. Omar Bala Lia Labala Bayas. So Shimon upstairs turns to Reuben and he says, Look, uh, let's rebuild the house. Omar Bala Lia Labala Bayas. Live nice. Let's build it up. When he writes, uh, Reuben is not interested. Hare Bala Lia Boyna Bayas. So now Shimon is compelled to build floor number one. But he can live there until um, you know Ruvain pays him uh, for his expenses. And then Shimon will go and add the second floor. So clearly the Balabais of the first floor has to pay the expenses. But but Shimon who now lived for half a year in Ruvain's house doesn't have to deduct anything for rent. Shmamino, that proves that Zen in this case it's Shimon. In this case it's Ruvain because he had no uh, expenses, he had no loss, uh, he wasn't going to build a house in any case. So your potter, is that a right? No, Shani Hassan, perhaps there is different. The base of Ali of Mishtabit, because, you know, Ruben, who was meant to rebuild his first floor, is really committed, he's mishubud, to, um, you know, put down that first floor, to have Shimon build on top of him. That's just a deal, it's a commitment, it's an ongoing commitment. So therefore, when Ruben reneges on his commitment, fails to build up the first floor, Shimon has full right to build and live there. Therefore, he doesn't have to pay. To Hashemah, he comes to ride the other way. Rabbi Da'imer, no, Shimon has to pay him rent. Here is an example of somebody living in another person's place without permission. To pay him rent. So, according to Rabbi Yudah, Shimon does have to compensate Reuven for rent. In this case, it's Shimon. In this case, it's Reuven. He has no loss from it. You have to pay. Well, says the Gemara, there is loss, actually. Shani Hasam. You know why? There is different Misham Shachrurisa Dash Yaisa. Because Ruben's, you know, living in this house, it dirties up the wall, blackens the wall, there is wear and tear. So ultimately, when Ruben moves in, he's going to get a used house. So he has a right to collect rent. So back to the question. Suppose, you know, we have a, just a standard case without any of these concerns, without any of these additional factors. We have a Zen, Nen, Vezel, Echasa. Pay or no pay? Shalchua, so they sent it to the base medrash, Be'er Rabbi Ami. Omar, he responded, of course no pay. Yichima asalai, uma chasroi, ma yizikoi. What did the uh, fellow do to him? Uh, did he uh, bring him a loss? Did he damage his house? Of course you don't have to pay. Rabbi Chir Ba'ab Omar, when he heard of the question, he says, you have, have to give it some thought. This yashe b'davar. Ha'adav shalchua kamei, short time later, they sent him the question again. No, he wants the answer. Shalchua kamei to Rabbi Chir Ba'ab. Omar, he got a little bit, he says, uh, Hold your horses. Sending to me again and again. Give me some time. You don't think if I would have come up with a solution, I would have sent it to them. Okay. It's We have a machlekes amaraim regarding the halach. Rav Kana Amar Biechan Einoi Tzarech Lalos Leisachar. In this case, you don't have to pay rent. Rav Avo Amar Biechan Amar Tzarech Lalos Leisachar. You do have to pay rent. Amar Papa. Hold Rav Avo. This uh, version of Rav Avo, the name of Rav Biechan, you have to pay rent. In the case of Zen and of Zelay Chasa, La Beferish Itmar wasn't stated explicitly. Ella Machlali Itmar. 
rather a revol, implied it from Rabbi Yechon's words elsewhere, which is like this. This is not a Mishnah regarding Me'ilah, misusing Hegdish property. Not al even a al Hegdish. So we have a gizber, a treasurer, administrator. He takes uh, you know, Hegdish building material, a stone, a beam. There's no Me'ilah taking place because it didn't change hands because, you know, whatever is in his possession is really technically in Hegdish's possession. He's meant to hold on to things for Hegdish, right? So there's no Me'ilah taking place. But Nosn al he gave it to his friend. Oh, now there was Me'ilah. There was a change of hands. Who Ma'al, so the gizber who gave it to him, committed Me'ilah, the Ma'al, the recipient did not. Because it's the gizber is doing. Bon al so imagine the gizber puts the Kaira into his own house in a way which doesn't, you know, change the face of this kaira, just pl- plopped it on some place without actually building it in. There's no meal taking place. Until he, you know, actually benefits from it. He lives, sits underneath it, and he benefits from that beam, a pruta worth. This that we're waiting for the hana and building it in, in itself is not considered meila. We placed it on a skylight. Basically, it didn't really physically alter the actual, you know, beam, and therefore there's no me'ila taking place until you have a no. Now, the Yosef Ravu, Rabbi Avu was sitting, in Rabbi Yechon, in front of Rabbi Yechon, because Amar Mishmei Shmuel, and he quoted Shmuel, Zoy Semeris, we learn from here, the fact that the Gizber has to pay for the Hano, Hador B'chatzor Chaveru, Shlemi Daitoi, Tzorach Lalat Lisochar. Right? If you uh, live in your friend's house, without permission, you have to pay rent. And that's why the, the fellow who enjoyed, who benefited from the kaira, did meila because just like when you do it to your friends, then you have to pay rent. When you do it to the hegdish, you have to pay as well. And Rabbi Yechon remained silent. Now, Iosavar, Ro thought, he understood me, the shasik, moitale. The fact that Rabbi Yechon remained silent indicates consent, that he was in agreement with Ravo's explanation. And that's how Ravo derived the Rabbi Yechon holds that in the case of Zenin, for the Lechas, you have to pay rent. But it's incorrect. Just the opposite. Rabbi Yechon disregarded this equation. There's no connection between this case of Hegdish to the case of, you know, ordinary people regarding, you know, uh, rent. Why? Kid the Rabbah. Dama Rabbah Rabbah tells us Hegdish le midas. Using Hegdish property without without permission, without notification, you know, Hashem knows what's going on. So it's like, it's like, imagine you walk into your friend's house, and he says, look, you're going to stay, you're going to pay rent. I'm telling you right now, I'm informing you. In this case, of course you have to pay. This whole sugi was, if it was done without permission. It's after the fact. Pay or no pay. But initially, if he warns him, look, you're going to stay there, I'm going to charge you. Of course he has a right to do that. And that's exactly what happened. It's exactly the case by Hegdish, because Hashem knows. Hashem is aware. And Hashem set forth the rules. You use Hagdish, you pay. So it, it's as though it was stipulated in advance. And of course, in this case, you pay. So there's no connection between this and our sugya, which is speaking after the fact. And if Rabbi Yechon sort of disregarded the equation. However, Rabbi Avo understood Rabbi Yechon was in agreement that Zenen of Zelechaser is Chayev to pay the rent. Okay, conclusion. We started with the goat hopping onto the barrel, ate the thing, broke the barrel, Yechayev, Nezak Shalom on both. We have halacha that the animal reached in to the back of the other animal, that's called Chatzar Nezak, and you pay Nezak Shalom. If an animal jumps up and reaches, that's called Keren, that's Mishuna, it's Chayev, even Mishus Rab. We had a story about Ms. Galgil, how do we treat it? We had a discussion regarding a person's Mishana does something, it's considered a deviation out in the street, and somebody else comes and strikes at it. Even though you potter for shenim shisram, but hano you have to pay. We have two ways to understand hano. That took us to the next discussion regarding zenen with elechaser. Back and forth, you had so many, many, many attempts at rais, and ultimately it turns out that some machlekes amayray. Hatzalcha rabbi m'suris teves.